Good evening and welcome to the Utopian Baseball Universe Chicago Cubs team preview show. I'm Joey Buckholtz. Uh, this is going to be a really fun one, guys. Uh, if you've known me for a long time, uh, you probably know that uh, my earliest baseball memories uh, are involved the Chicago Cubs. Uh, if you read my book, uh, when we got cable in 1984, um, I was holding a baseball glove when the cable man showed up, and he actually sat down with me and he highlighted uh, every single game in that TV guide, and it was Cubs, Braves, Mets, Cubs, Braves, Mets, a couple Brewer games, but uh, in the summer of 84 uh, and probably for the next five or six years, my grandma and I watched uh, pretty much every single uh, home game. Uh, if the Cubs were playing at home, I, I think they installed lights in 88, so probably for four or five years. We were watching Cubs games every afternoon, and then uh, I would watch Mets games at night, uh, weekends, uh, evenings, weekends. Um, and it really wasn't until 1997 uh, when the Brewers moved to the National League and all of a sudden you know, found themselves in the same division with the Cubs that I had to start uh, picking, a, picking an allegiance. Um, but I think in that book, uh, when I ranked all 30 teams from favorite to least favorite, uh, I'm pretty sure the Cubs were third uh, behind the Mets, Brewers, uh, or Mets, Brewers, then Cubs. So this is going to be a really fun show. Um, I, I met our guest about, I'd say a week ago, maybe 10 days ago. Uh, his name is Geeker Cruzen. Uh, so we're going to bring him on right now. Geek, How's it going, Joey? How are you tonight? Doing well, doing well. Got the Blackhawks on. I'm ready to go. Uh, you, uh, and, and this is unanimous, you have won the contest for coolest name uh, for any guests we've had on so far. Uh, tell us about your name so, and initially how you became a fan. Um, well, I'm a Illinois native, so, you know, I was bred blue. You know, I, well, you know, every day my mom had the Cubs on the radio. I can still hear the Van Halen song for the intro in my head. Um, the nickname was dubbed to me as a two-year-old. I have two older brothers, and you know how older brothers can be. And they called me Geeker Leaker. And uh, Geeker, part of it stuck, thank God, not the leaker. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as I got older, I've become a huge gamer, huge sports guy, and it just kind of became my moniker. And I've just kind of owned it as I've gotten older. I love it. Uh, now, you're from Chicago? Uh, Peoria originally. I live in Rockford currently. Okay. Um, I guess first share with us uh, your earliest baseball memories uh, as it relates to becoming a Cubs fan. Yeah, I, ironically, my mom has my first Cubs ticket from when I was two years old. And uh, the date is uh, uh, September 20th, 1984. Uh, I obviously don't remember that. I was only two years old. And, uh, you know, my memories, like I said, it all comes from the radio. My mom used to, you know, have us out in the yard playing ball, playing wiffle ball. And uh, she would just have it on constantly, listen to the Cubs, you know. And uh, as I got older, you know, they got on TV and I fell in love with the Ryan Sandberg teams. And, you know, my, one of my favorite players growing up was always Jody Davis. I really loved Jody Davis when he was playing. And, uh, you know, the Hawk and Mad Dog and all those guys. And, you know, I'm hard into the, you know, late 80s, 90s teams and, you know, watching them and listening to them and, you know, watching the ups and downs that the Cubs love to go through. It just, you know, it, every season, you, you know, you come back with the, all right, this is the year. And, you know, it took us till 2016, but we got one. <laughs> now, um, so you were born, uh, if, if my math is correct, you were born like 82-ish? 82, yep. 7-11, okay. 82. So when I, in 82, 83, 84, um, one of the radio voices for the Brewers is actually the, I, I think he's still with the Cubs right now, Pat Hughes. Yep. Um, who was who was the primary radio voice for the Cubs in the mid '80s to late '80s before Hughes got there? Uh, oh, I mean Harry Carey was a big one. I'm not sure exactly what years he was in there. I mean he's the only voice I ever hear in my head, ever. And uh, my, you know, I don't even know the exact like I. I know it was uh, Stone was there for a while. Um, trying to think before that, I can't really date it. Um, I wonder if at that point they were doing like a simulcast because I grew up with Carrie and Stone. 
Okay. Um, you know, it was, you know, now with home games being normal for them to be on TV, everyone's got kind of their own regional yeah. conversation, if you will. But uh, for me, it was Harry Carey, Steve Stone. I forget what year Hughes uh, left for the Cubs, but um, yeah, just some really iconic voices there for the for the Cubs over the years. Yeah, yeah, it's, we've had some good radio guys. I really enjoyed it, you know. And you know, radio doesn't get used as much anymore, unfortunately. It should be, but you know, the the announcers are hit or miss these days. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I'm not a huge uh, Joe Buck fan. Yeah. Um, for football, I can tolerate him a little bit, but baseball, you really need to be a, a really good storyteller. And I just think he, he kind of lacks that. So I've always preferred to hit, listen to the local people um, in the postseason uh, setting. Yep. Uh, so again, uh, let's see how good my math is. So in, in 98, you would have been about 16. Absolutely. Uh, tell us some of your memories of McGuire Sosa from that summer. Oh my goodness, was that amazing season. You know, like, just watching so, so like as a Cubs fan who just you know I grew up in Peoria, which if you don't know is right in between, like two and a half hours of St. Louis, two and a half hours of Chicago, complete split city. So you've got 50-50 going at it. And we rallied together that season as rivals to root for our guys to to make that home run, you know, championship. And you know, McGuire's home run came off of us and it it doesn't sting. It's just an amazing thing to get that much more involved in one of the greatest sports ever invented and to see, you know, this rivalry kind of take shape as like a friendship and a, you know, a mutual bonding, you know, it was really interesting. I, I really enjoyed watching McGuire and obviously Sosa, you know, I actually have a, a short story from the night McGuire hit the Homer. Mm -hmm. um, I was but, actually Traxel. Was that who he hit it off of? Steve Traxel. Um, I believe the date was September 8th, 98. Okay. I was on my honeymoon. <laughs> awesome. Um, and my wife, uh, so, you know, we got there on a Saturday. This was on a Monday night, I believe. My wife had a, a, a little bit of a stomach uh, issue, but we were in Door County, and there's really not a lot of commerce. Yeah, Door County is beautiful. And uh, she said, you know, I hate to send you out, but I really, I could really use some Sprite. Mm. So I said, okay, um, I'll, I'll go get us some Sprite. I don't know where I'm going. You know, <laughs> it's, not, it's not like there was just like a Walgreens, you know, next right. door. So on the Monday night that he hit the homer, I left. I came back. And I don't know why I didn't think of this, but I didn't, I didn't think to like find it on the radio or anything. And I, when I got back to the villa, she just she just looked so sad, and she said, "I'm so sorry." And I said, "He hit it, didn't he?" Said, yeah. So I, I didn't see it live. That's crazy. But you know, they would show it like a hundred times. That oh, night. Yeah. found it on ESPN. But um, boy, what just what a fun summer! I probably we were lucky in Milwaukee because we saw the Cardinals and, and Cubs come here. What 30, 30, 30, or I guess with home and road splits, I think we saw them between 12 and 15 times at, at County Stadium that summer. Absolutely. Uh, it was just incredible. Um, do you want to talk about 03? Um, the only thing I have to say about 03 is I don't know why DeRosa was the only one trying in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 he was the only one that looked like he was trying. It was crazy. So uh, I, I personally, again, I was rooting for the Cubs really hard in 03. Um, I would say 86 and 03 are neck and neck for the best uh, postseasons of all time. Um, just just as a baseball fan, and I know just getting to know you in the last uh, seven to ten days, we're baseball fans first. Absolutely. And then we, we kind of root for our team second. But uh, that Florida-Chicago series, uh, the Bartman game, uh, and then seven when, when Wood homers – have you seen that like crucifixion, crucifixion of Bartman? Like the story about what he went through after the game. I saw. I think there's two things out there. I saw the thirty for thirty. I think that's the one I watched. Or whatever ESPN did. I don't know if it's branded as a thirty for thirty, but right. um, it's so sad. Like, and I guess my understanding is um, he wants nothing to do with the Cubs. Nope. 
like there, there have been, I think even since 16, there've been uh, an olive branch has been extended to get them back, do a first pitch or whatever. But um, there, there's, from what I've heard, there's uh, no idea what he's up to. Right. Yeah, exactly. He's just a ghost right now in the Chicago lore. And, and I don't know how you feel about this, but like I've, I've obviously have seen that a million times and there's a guy next to him that I thought there was two or three. I thought that reached. Yeah. That actually, it seemed like we're more aggressive. He was more defensive. Like, Oh, here's, here comes oh. a ball. <laughs> but because he looks so, you know, awkward. Yeah. He had a very unique look that night. That was unfortunate for him. Yeah. So I, I, I totally feel bad for the guy. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I hope at some point because I know like uh, the, the Red Sox eventually brought Buckner back, and, and he was uh, when he the ovation he got uh, when they won. I think it was the second time they won the World Series in 07. Seven, yeah. When in, uh, he threw out the first pitch in 08, uh, that that still gives gives me chills to see, and I hope that Bartman gets that opportunity at some yeah. point. I mean, he, he deserves it. He didn't do anything wrong. It's a normal fan reaction. You know, it just happened to be in a, you know, greatly important game to us, and it just got way blown out of proportion. Yeah. Um, so let's get to the really fun stuff. Tell me about uh, – I mean, I guess we can start in uh, 15, 2015, 2016. The Cubs were in the National League Championship Series in 15. Uh, they got swept by the Mets. But then in, uh, in 16, it all happens – uh, 108 years, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, share some of the memories from that year, and I know, being a Cubs fan, that that this is going to be uh, near and dear to your heart. Yeah, it was it was an amazing year. Obviously, you know, anytime you win a championship after that long of a drought, it's got to be special, and you could feel it. I don't know if I don't know if non Cubs fans could feel it, but you know, we felt it a little bit in 15 and had that let down in the playoffs. But then in 16, as the season went along, and then when the organization itself went all in for him, um, <clears throat> Chapman, that's that was that was key. You know, just getting the fan base rallied around having the closer in Major League Baseball, and knowing that once we got to a ninth in, ninth inning, ideally we had it on lockdown, and then the season just kept building, and we get to the playoffs, and you know we, we rode our hot hot horses and Arietta and Lester and uh, Hendricks and. You know, got some hitting, which is sparing these days, and uh, managed to put it all together. And you know, that World Series, obviously, is a classic going to Game 7 extra innings. You know, it's just unreal what they were able to accomplish. And the myth of Kyle Schwarber is real in Chicago, and he is a legend forever. It's uh, – I just – I get chills just talking about it. I haven't even rewatched the World Series because I'm afraid of how bad I'm going to cry because I'm still yet to cry from the championship. Is that true? I'm still in shock, man. I'm just, it's still one of those things that's almost too good to be true. And I have a thing about things that are too good to be true. They must be, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's interesting, you know, like once I watch it again, I'm, I want to watch it in a group setting to, to get all those emotions and see everybody reacting. You know, I was, I was actually just alone with my wife and my mom when I watched it, my mom being the one who got me into, you know, baseball and sports and the Cubs and, I, I don't know if she's cried yet. We're just still in shock, you know, five years later. One of the things that we've talked about in this show, um, the possibility of doing um, like a watch party. Now, we for um, for uh, 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 trademark uh, clearance reasons, we can't show the footage. Right. What, one thing we can do is we can, we can get in a room like this, because uh, I know StreamYard uh, specifically lets me host 10 people at a time. Oh, nice. But on uh, on Facebook Messenger, we can get in a room like this for free and get 50 people at a time. The, the only difference is StreamYard, uh, we have the ability to go live like we are now. Right. Um, with the Messenger room, it would only be the people within the room. So it wouldn't telecast out to the group. Gotcha. But we have the ability where we can all be watching the game together and then see each other um, react to it. That'd be awesome. And it, it's something I'm thinking about doing this summer, even not as a show, but just as a shared experience um, among the people that watch those games. And when I, when I started writing down games that I wanted to do, uh, naturally as a Mets fan, I had uh, 86 in mind, but the first non-Mets game that I wrote down was game seven of 2016. Absolutely. Because in my opinion, 
as a baseball fan, that was the biggest game of all time. Um, and I, I think it lived up to it. Uh, just, you know, one, one team waiting 108 years, the other team waiting 68 years. Um, I was telling you before the show, I actually moved to Cleveland that uh, fall. And uh, the, the morning of game five, um, I bought a ticket to uh, the Browns Jets. I think the Browns were terrible. They were like Owen. That doesn't sound like the Browns, man. No, I mean, I'm making this up. <laughs> I, I think at the time they were 0-8, um, but they were hosting a 30-year anniversary for the 86 team that went to the AFC title game. Nice. I was able to get a ticket day of, and uh, it was a rainy, kind of windy day. And at the game – the person sitting next to me said, you know, you can watch game five of the World Series at Progressive Field. They're going to have the game on the big screen. That's awesome. For $10. And I said, oh, I, de I definitely got to do that. Uh, and, you know, for those of you not uh, familiar, uh, at the time, the Indians had a 3-1 lead in the series, and game five was at Wrigley. And that night, the person I sat next to, and I'll never forget this, she kept telling me, and this was in like the third, fourth inning of that game where it was still knotted at zero or one, one or whatever it was. She said, uh, this is, this is when and where the parade is going to be. Oh. And I just, I had, <laughs> I had to stop her and I say, are you really, we're, t we're really talking about a parade right now. Uh, and we haven't won this game yet because, you know, if we don't win tonight, we, you know, even though there's a good chance that they could, we still have we still have to win one more game, and there is no clock in baseball. I really wish you wouldn't talk about a parade right now. And sure enough, Cubs <laughs> won Game Five. Uh, game Six, if I if I remember, I think it was a blowout. I think the yeah. Cubs won like seven to one or something like that. Yep. And then Game Seven, I was actually, um, even though I had just accepted a job in Cleveland, I didn't have an apartment yet because they couldn't get it ready for another three weeks. I was living out of a hotel in Berea. And about a block down from my hotel, there was a place called uh, Damon's A Place for Ribs, which used to be uh, here in Nequan, about 10, mi about 10 miles from where I am right now. Um, really good barbecue and chicken sandwiches. So I watched game seven from Damon's. And the entire place was obviously Indians fans. <laughs> there were two Cubs fans that were sitting right next to me in a booth. And they were quiet uh, pretty much the whole game. And then when uh, Rajay Davis homered, they left. Ooh. And then when the Cub, after the delay and the Cubs had a lead, all of a sudden they came back. <laughs> and when, when Chris Bryant scooped the grounder and threw to Rizzo and it was over, those two guys went nuts. I was just in shock. Not sad. I was just in shock that the Cubs – are the World Series champions. Like, I was just like, I, I can't believe it's happened. It's one of those weird phrases of, like, witnessing history. But, like, when you're living a moment like that, you know it's something that's going to be in books for past your lifetime, you know? It, it's still, like, going into that night, I said, this is the biggest game of all time. But even, you know, five years later, it's still probably the most memorable, um, you know, just – unbelievable feeling like I, Cubs and Indians like one of these one of these teams is ending it tonight and, and it was the year versus major league right yeah it was just it was just unbelievable and I you know I was telling you before the show as soon as that out was recorded I wasn't sad I wasn't happy I was just like wow but all I could think about was my grandma because we we watched the Cubs games every day for five years I actually I remember in '85 when Larry Bowa was at the end of his career and the Cubs were wanted to bring up Dunstan, mm -hmm. and uh, they just in the middle of a pennant race, uh, August of '85, they just cut Larry Bowa. Yeah, and I was uh, I was crying. I was like, how can you know? Two years before that, the Brewers traded my favorite player, and now the Cubs are trading or releasing one of my favorites. Um, so the the memories are so thick that even though I might not be rooting for them on a daily basis now, um, I'll always have a soft spot in my heart for the Cubs. And I, I love Wrigley Field. Mark Pryor is one of my favorite players of all time. I wish his career. 22, baby. 
yeah, I just, I loved prior. I loved 98 was so fun. Yeah. Um, you know, when at the end of all of this, when we, when we take, you know, the final score, uh, the Cubs are going to be right up there with the Mets and Brewers for me, as far as teams that, uh, gave me the most memories, uh, in my lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tell me what you think about this current, uh, 2021, the, the major league Cubs, if you will. Because obviously uh, later in the show we're going to talk about the Utopian Cubs, but um, what do you feel about the, the the team that the Cubs are going to field for 2021? I'm more optimistic than most, I believe. I uh, I did my research on the cost cutting. I don't understand Jack Peterson, but a left-handed bat that can crush it. You, you can always use one of those. Um, bring back Arietta. I love Arietta. Hopefully he can have a Cy Young year. Um, but, you know, it's going to be the Cardinals more than likely on top. They're just stacked. And then Brewers and Cubs fighting for second and hopefully a wild card. And then, you know, the Reds and Pittsburgh are going to do what they do. <laughs> you, know, you know, if we get some good quality relief pitching, we could end up taking down the Cardinals. But it's going to it's going to take some guys that nobody really knows of to do some amazing things in order for the Cubs to advance more than probably just the wild card. Um, what are your thoughts on the possibility? Because I know it's not uh, – they haven't fully slammed the door on this yet, but the possibility of them doing the uh, universal DH again in 2021. You know, I've always been a pitcher should hit guy. You know, Carlos Zambrano and those guys can rake Lester. Lester got some hits. Um, but in the end, we're at a day and age where you're paying these guys to pitch. You're not paying them to hit. So I'm completely okay with it now i haven't been up until probably the last two years and it's just a job security thing you know you, you got to keep those pitchers healthy and pitching and not only that but it gives another player an opportunity to make money you know just make a name for yourself by hitting like poppy you know just get in there and rake so uh the, the reason uh, not a lot of people understand this or are, are aware of this but the the designated hitter was actually brought in the league in 1973 as a one-year pilot in the American League to increase attendance and increase offense. It was it was not even intended to be used in 74, um, but the players' union wanted to keep it because how can you create a job and then just eliminate a job? Right. Um, and, and now, you know, so now we're talking, what, 47 years later, uh, the National League is the, is the last league uh, in organized baseball that has it. And I think it's time because, you know, Major League Baseball doesn't have separate uh, jurisdiction anymore. They don't have an American League president, National League president. All the umpires are under one umbrella now. Um, I think it just makes sense. And I'm like you. I, I prefer National League Baseball where the pitchers hit. Mm -hmm. And I think at some point if you're not going to uh, get rid of it in the American League, which they never will, no, you might as well just institute it in the National League so that all the teams are playing the same rules. I just think it's silly how uh, all year you have these two leagues play different rules and then the World Series, um, the American League, you know, loses a hitter in the National League Park and then the National yeah. League gains a hitter in the American League Park. Yeah, to me, it true. seems like the National League benefits from that because you're either taking away their best hitter or one of their best hitters or you're adding, you know, a ninth hitter. Yep. But I think at some point, it, it, I think there's just so much momentum and I still feel like it, they could add it this year. Um, and I'm, I'm, it, it's a fight that I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna uh, fight it anymore. It's, it is. I, what think it, I think it's a little bit like interleague play where nobody wants it, but it's here and it's here to stay. Yeah. Um, but, but I will assure people watching tonight um, that there is no designated hitter in the Utopian Baseball Universe. Our pitchers can rake. They can rake. They can rake. They they can. I mean, they're not going to hit 400, but they're going to. You know, they're going to do some things. Off the top of your head, can you think of last year what pitcher had the best hitting for the 2020 season? Yeah, I would be guessing such a small sample size, but I would. Yeah. I you know I think of someone like Jake Degrom. Okay. Because uh, he was drafted as a shortstop. Yeah. So I, that's interesting. I'll actually have to look that up. Um, Zach Ranky can hit. I know that. Mm -hmm. Um, Granky, yeah. what an interesting story that guy has. Yeah. Tell us about Geekers Emporium. So Geekers Emporium is my Facebook group to try and connect people based on their uh, gaming and hobbies. 
I'm a super gamer, super hobbyist. I love anything. I'm, I, like I said, I've owned the geeker and I'm hardcore video games and tabletop games. And, you know, I love hearing about people's hobbies, you know, model trains and anything of that nature, just to, you know, how did you get interested in that? How does it interest you? You know, I'm big into movies and film and sports and, you know, the Emporium is just a place I'm trying to get people to connect based on their hobbies and likes and just trying to garner a following and, you know, uh, get my business off the ground as far as helping people connect through games and hobbies, you know. Um, as as we're speaking right now, I'm letting the folks know that are watching uh, how they can join Geekers Emporium. Uh, my, my, my baseball group is all inclusive. Like when, when people are doing something uh, that's positive, it doesn't necessarily have to be a baseball setting. Um, I want our... I want our members to know uh, what's out there. So I'm, I'm actually posting it right now. Excellent. I, I, I feel the same way, man. Just good people doing good things deserve credit. So this is actually the first time I've actually done this uh, during a live show. But if people are watching now, uh, Geeker Cruising, uh, uh, Geekers Emporium yep. is the group. Yep. Um, so... Uh, I always give the guests the option to take a peek at the rosters before the show or to kind of be surprised. And Geeker has chosen to be surprised. So, um, in, a, in about a minute, we're going to segue into the 2021 Cubs Utopian roster. Uh, but before we do that, let's take a look at uh, some of their highlights of the schedule. Uh, opening day is Friday, March 26th. And the Cubs are going to open their season at home. Sweet. Against the San Diego Padres on uh, Friday the 26th. They're a very interesting team. <laughs> uh, Memorial Day, they're going to be hosting the Brewers. Nice. On Independence Day, they're going to be hosting the Kansas City Royals, who were the South Division champions last year. That's a stadium I want to see. Kansas City? Yeah. I've never been there, but I, I've heard it, it just looks gorgeous, and I, right. I, I would like to get there myself. Absolutely. Uh, Labor Day, the Cubs at the Reds. And then the uh, Cubs are going to finish the season at home uh, once again against the Brewers. So um, a division a rival, the Brewers, are going to host on Memorial Day and to finish the season. I always like to finish with division. Hopefully give us an edge at the end. Yeah, and we this is the second straight year. We've actually finished with three weeks of division games. Nice. Um, so, again, uh, Cubs hosting the Padres to start the season. Uh hosting the Brewers on Memorial Day, hosting the Royals on Independence Day, at Cincinnati on Labor Day, and then finishing at home against the Brewers. Uh, so the manager of the 2021 Utopian Cubs is David Ross. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't mean that David Ross is, you know, the greatest. Oh, he's the best. He's winning the, Super, the World Series this year. I mean, I just, you know, one of the things that I looked at when I was creating these rosters was I wanted a mix of – legends, favorites, and current people in their position. And I figured since I know Joe Madden won a World Series with the Cubs, but I have him managing the Rays in this utopian baseball. Yeah, this makes sense. And I know that Cubs fans are uh, big fans of David Ross. So this is David Ross's ball club. Absolutely. He was on that 16 team, baby. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at their opening day starting lineup. And my favorite part of the show, this is where uh, my guest tells me where I, I messed up. Well, if it's not the 16 team, you messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 again, I say this in every show, uh, just because these particular nine are starting an opening day, it doesn't mean that they're getting the majority of starts throughout the year. This is just the opening day uh, starting lineup. And then we're going to look at what the bench looks like. We're going to the starting pitching and then the bullpen. And uh, you viewers are actually going to have a chance at 8 o'clock tonight to vote on who the fifth starter is going to be for the Cubs to open the season. And I made sure to pose that question a little, a little more clearly this time because I, I confused even myself uh, in the middle of last week when I did the Marlins poll. Uh, so with that being said, let's get to the opening day starting lineup for your Chicago Cubs. Yeah. Leading off and playing third base, Chris Bryant. Ooh, leading off. Batting second and playing second base, Ryan Sandberg. Batting third, third uh, first baseman, Anthony Rizzo. Batting fourth, right fielder, Sammy Sosa. Batting fifth, center fielder, Hack Wilson. 
Nice. Hack Wilson is the uh, all-time leader in RBIs for a season with 191. East. Uh, on opening day, batting sixth and playing shortstop, Ernie Banks. Heck yeah. Let's play two. To have Banks hitting sixth, that's just like a luxury right there. Right. Uh, batting seventh, left fielder Billy Williams. Yeah. Batting eighth, catcher Jody Davis. Jody, nice. That one's for Scott Moser, who's not in the group, but he was uh, he was actually my best friend's little brother, and his favorite all-time player is Jody Davis. Yeah, I don't know. He stood out to me in those teams also. He was just fun. Like, I love Jody Davis. Yeah. Uh, and then for the second straight year, the opening day starter for the Cubs is going to be Fergie Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins actually threw a no-hitter against the Angels last year in the Utopian Baseball Universe. Nice. Uh, so the question I have is, um, I couldn't find an obvious leadoff hitter here. Where where should I have gone with that? Just real quick, who'd you say was catching? Jody Davis. That's right, that's right. Okay. So, I mean, Bryant makes sense. He makes contact, but personally I'd put Rizzo there because – I. I still am flabbergasted that he isn't our leadoff hitter. The guy just gets on base and he doesn't rake it so much that he's clearing the base on first, you know, first right away. You know, if I was, I would be Rizzo Bryant for me. That's just how I go. You know, it doesn't matter about speed anymore. It matters about efficiency. And Rizzo's just one of the more efficient batters in the league. And, and like I said, these, these rosters are, are fluid. So we're going to pass along that uh, information to the manager. And uh, I'm sure we'll see Rizzo in that leadoff pole at some point. Uh, let's look at the rest of the position players for these uh, 2021 Cubs. Uh, catcher, we have Giovanni Soto. Nice. Uh, we got some really old players here. Frank Chance, and I just realized I spelled his name wrong. Frank Chance <laughs> and Johnny Evers. Nice. Evers two-thirds of the uh, – Tink uh, Evers, Evers to Chance. Yeah. Ron Santo makes this ball club. Heck, yeah. Javier Baez. Alfonso Soriano, Ori. Jason Hayward, Jay Hay? and then uh, the Cubs Negro League representative for 2021, Cumberland Posey. I'm going to Google that guy right now. He actually did more, uh, I think, as an executive than he did as a player, but um, I think he's going to be a great addition to this Cubs team in 2021. Uh, let's look at the starting pitching. As mentioned, Fergie Jenkins gets the ball against the Padres on opening day. Carlos Sambrano was lights out last year in this league. I think he was six. Mark Pryor is going to start on Sunday against the Padres. And then uh, their next series is against Seattle at home. It's going to be Kyle Hendricks getting the ball. And then this is where you guys come in. The fifth starter is either going to be Jake Arrieta, Rick Sutcliffe, or Kerry Wood. All all seven of the or actually Kyle Hendricks was not on the Utopian last year, but uh, all six of these other pitchers were on the roster last year. Sutcliffe struggled a bit. Arietta came up in late June and was okay. And Kerry Wood really struggled. Um, so this is a team last year that uh, I actually I'm gonna pull it up right now. Uh, they just missed the playoffs. They missed the playoffs by about three games last year. Uh, they were 12th in pitching and 4th in hitting. Um, but the starting pitching outside of Zambrano kind of struggled. It was their bullpen that kind of made up for it. Uh, this Cubs team was actually third last year in bullpen ERA. Uh, so bringing in Hendricks, I think, is an upgrade. And then uh, if, if one of these – uh, three steps up and has a big year. I think the Cubs are going to be in contention uh, in 2021. Right on. Let's look at that bullpen that did a pretty decent job last year. Uh, we got Lee Smith. Nice. Ryan Dempster. Carlos, Carlos Marmol. Hector Rondon. Kevin Gregg. Jeremy Jeffress. And Pedro Strop. That's a pretty solid bullpen. Strope. Yep. That's a pretty decent bullpen. And like I said, they were yeah. third last year uh, in bullpen ERA for the Utopian Baseball Universe. That's awesome. Um, any glaring omissions? Now, again, if, if you don't see your favorites on this roster, it doesn't mean that they're uh, never going to be on the Cubs. Um, it just means that 
I had to choose 30 for this year. They could have been a team last year. We might bring them in uh, next year, but are there any obvious names that I'm missing here, Deaker? Uh, obvious I'm not sure about. After uh, doing my research, catcher Gabby Hartnett. Okay, yeah. Um, as I'm looking more at this guy, the more I'm I'm impressed by his numbers. And, you know, I, one of those guys that I would love to see some film on, you know. He had a dead arm season, sat out a whole season with a dead arm, came back and lit it up again the next season. That's crazy. That could be a – that could be a huge uh, free agent pickup for the Cubs in 22. Nice. Um, go ahead. One of the things, too, and I mentioned this on last night's show, um, I purposely, and, and that's not, you know, I'm, I won't lie and say that was one of the names, but I purposely left off names on each roster because I want to make splashes each year. Okay. Uh, like Cy Young is not on a roster. Okay. I, he's going to, he, he'll be like the free agent prize next year. Nice. Um, there's some really obvious uh, Hall of Famers that are just left off because I want to continue to uh, grow it and, and make it seem as if these rosters are evolving over time. Yeah, living roster. I like that. Yeah. Um, we've got a, a good number of questions and comments for you. Uh, so let's get to those here. Sounds good. Uh, now, again, some of these are anonymous because they haven't uh, given – uh, permission to use their names. So we have uh, someone that's just a fan of uh, Pat Hughes and Ron Santo. Oh yeah. That booth, that was a really good booth. I mean, Pat Hughes, I like Pat Hughes so much that, you know, Bob Uecker is the voice of the Brewers in the Utopian. Harry yeah. Curry is of course the, the voice of the Cubs in the Utopian. I needed to find a home for Pat Hughes. So Pat Hughes is actually the voice of the Durham Bulls. Oh, nice. In the yeah. Utopian. And I got a baseball card for him and everything. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, Andrew Pfeffer says, Corey Probus, now the voice of the Twins, has said there is a lot of hues in the way he calls games. That's I, I hear that too, actually. And Pat Hughes is is a Hall of Famer. I, th I, I mean, I think he literally should be a Hall of Famer at some point. He's that good. Uh, Andrew also says, I went to a Cubs at Brewers game in September 98. I had never seen County Stadium so alive. It was like, holy cow. I was probably with you. Uh, and <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, like literally, I think we, we were probably there together because Andy stood up in my wedding. My wedding was in September of 98. Um, I know that I went to at least a couple of those games that month. So it's very possible that we were there together. Uh, Andy also says, don't you think Alou really did Bartman dirty that night by freaking out like he did? Yes. I, yeah. What do you, yeah. I agree 100%. Alou, I mean, I've never, like the overreaction of that. You know, he made it seem bigger than it was. Like, just move on, let's play, let's get the W, you know? Yeah. Have you um, – and I know, I know you said you haven't watched the 16 series back yet. Have you – because I can't watch the 2006 NLCS when Beltron looked at that curveball. Have you been able to watch any of those 03 games? Just that documentary. I, You know, watching the documentary on Bartman was painful enough. <laughs> To yeah. watch each game and know the outcome being not the way you want, I just can't do it. It's hard. It's hard. Tommy, friend of the show, says I've been to game one. I've been to one game at Wrigley in 2014. Had great seats, five rows from the field to the left of the dugout. I got phone call during the game. Turns out my now ex-wife had moved out and taken my dog. I've despised the Cubs ever since. Well, I mean that makes sense. I mean, guilt by association. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Andrew says there's another bowling live stream that did something similar for the players championship last weekend, but they promoted it more as they were doing it to a full play by play to do interviews. Yeah, that's, that's a fun idea. Uh, Tommy says MLB imposed rain delay gave that game to the Cubs took away Cleveland's momentum. Uh, what do you think about that geeker? Um, you know, you still got to come out and play. Yeah. You know? like, it's one thing to shift momentum. It's another thing for God to intervene. <laughs> I mean, it did rain that night, Tommy. It was raining. Hey, if Jay Hayes not in that clubhouse, who knows what happens? So Chuck, uh, who is going to be on our Rays show, says that Japan Pacific League doesn't doesn't use the DH. Interesting. And uh, and, and I think that's the point I was making is that um, I think the National League is the only one that does. So if 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 Chuck is typing this out correctly. Uh, I think the National League is the only one that does, unless he meant to say that the Japan League does. But we'll 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 double check that. 
Uh, Andrew says, I could talk about a hobby, freaking baseball cards. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a baseball card show in the summer. So I actually have a guy that's going to be helping me out. That's going to be, I'm going to be getting uh, boxes of cards and he's going to be opening them a live stream and we're going to be selling them and giving away and doing all kinds of stuff like that for him. There's, it's a huge market right now, man. It's insanely popular. It's coming back. G Gary Vaynerchuk is big into cards and, uh, I, I don't collect like I did when I was a kid, but I still buy packs and I keep the ones that I love. Um, I gave all my sets to a friend recently, but, um, I still have a binder of all my favorites. I love baseball cards. I think we talked about this recently, but I, ironically, when I was 18, I, uh, I gave my collection to my brother and had him buy me a PlayStation and three video games and I haven't looked back. And, uh, you know, until recently he's asking me to, uh, help him sell them. So I'm going through and looking at all these cards and my brothers and being like, oh man, that was mine. I can't believe it's worth this much money. It's pretty interesting. That's amazing. I When you do that uh, baseball card show, uh, let me know because we'll promote the heck out of it. In the oh, group. absolutely. That'd be great. Uh, Andrew's voting for Jose Canseco as the Cubs' fifth starter. Now, Andrew's a Brewers fan, <laughs> so he's, he's trying to do. Just so you guys know, those are the only three options officially. Um, you know, write-in votes are allowed, but eh, we'll see. Uh, so here's a – someone says Alfonso should lead off. I think that would make sense in games where Alfonso Soriano starts. It does. Uh, his OBP mm, – Yeah, he doesn't walk. Yeah, he doesn't walk. He swings a lot. Yeah. That's why I like really – Someone's voting for Wood already. So officially, the, the, the poll will actually go official at 8 o'clock tonight. That's who I'm going to vote for is Kerry. Uh, Jamie says he loves the UBU, and Jamie, we love you. You, you've been That's one of our favorite guests, and we're going to have oh, you. A great up. interview, man. Yeah, Jamie was uh, amazing. Jamie's actually going to have. Uh, we haven't worked out the details yet, but he's going to have his own segment, uh, a weekly segment. We're going to you can do like an ask of the um uh, type. Oh, I got so many questions, Jamie. Yeah, <laughs> Jamie, uh, <laughs> Geeker's coming for you, uh, but he hates the Cubs. I mean, your logo says it all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when the old style quit flowing on Higgins uh, 18, I, I don't know what that means. Uh, that's probably one of my friends, to be honest. Higgins 18 is where I, I went to college at Western Illinois University. Okay. And my core group of friends all met by living on the 18th floor of Higgins Hall. Which oh, okay. no longer this. They tore it down. So, all um, right. So, during the playoff series in 03, it was, you know, everybody made beer runs for old style. To the point when uh, I think it was Sosa hit that homer in the eighth. I think it was the eighth, maybe the ninth. The One of my friends was coming back from a beer run. He said there was two uh, halls, Higgins and Thompson. He said they were swaying from the people cheering in the halls. That's amazing. Uh, let's see. We got a couple more comments here. Tommy says, I miss the old MLB sticker books. If everyone, that's, uh, that's how I became a fan, Tommy, was uh, before we got cable – um, I collected the 82 Tops cards, and then I had the sticker book. I think Reggie Jackson was on the cover. Nice. And I think Tops put that out, too. And uh, I collected those sticker books for about six years. Uh, Wood can't argue with 20Ks in a game. Absolutely. So good. And Jamie says, thanks for the kudos. Um, another great show tonight. Geeker, I'm sure we're going to have you on again at some point. Absolutely. Uh, can't wait. I always, I always say to guests, like, if, if the Cubs do something really cool this summer – because uh, I I basically find out the results uh, either the the night before or the morning of uh, when you guys do. So if I you know if I see that the Cubs do something special, I might just call you and say, "Can you be on tonight at nine o'clock for five minutes?" Absolutely. Um, and uh, can't wait to see uh, how Geekers Emporium grows. Um, love having you in the group. Thank you. And um, been a blast, man. I'm enjoying yeah, it. So we, we, much. Again, we could do this all night. Uh, tomorrow night at, and there's, this is just a coincidence the way this worked out, but tomorrow night at eight o'clock, we're doing the Cardinals. Oh, nice. Um, one of my oldest, uh, I, I mean, I haven't known him that long, but, uh, I haven't seen him in a long time. So I say he's an old friend. Uh, this is someone I used to work with at UW credit union, uh, 10 years ago. His name is Matt Sadoff. He's going to be my guest tomorrow at eight o'clock talking Cardinals. Uh, we'll be unveiling the Cardinals roster that night. Uh, like I said, check back here in about 15 minutes. We're going to throw that poll up. We're going to announce uh, the winner for that poll on uh, Monday morning. 
So you guys will have uh, tonight and all of tomorrow and then the first half of Monday. So we're giving you, you know, about 36 hours or so to vote on the Cubs number five starter. Uh, a really good friend of mine, Mitch Nellis, is going to be on Monday. And then tomorrow I'll be uh, posting the remaining shows. We've got about uh, 12 left, I believe, 12 or 13 left. So uh, with that being said, Geeker, thanks again. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. For being on tonight. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll upload this to YouTube tonight. Uh, have a great night. Saturday Night Live is next with uh, <laughs> Nick Jonas. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy, brother.